Welcome back to a brand new episode of Master in Programming. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing something that I personally struggled to do uh, for a really long time, and that is uh, creating custom functions per repeater item. For example, right now, if we set this up so that when the user clicks on submit, we print out the element uh, or even just print out anything. It doesn't matter which button we click on, it's going to print the same thing. But what I want to do is I want to have an ability or a way that when, this is a repeater by the way, that when someone clicks a button in a specific item, we can find out which exact button was clicked and which exact element was clicked. To do this, what we need to do is basically go over here. Now in this scenario here, you would need to be on dev mode. I'm already in dev mode, so this is why it says turn off dev mode. For you, you just need to click on turn on dev mode. Now the first thing that I will do is I'm actually going to go ahead and click on this button. And then I'm going to go ahead and let me just move maybe my head. It's not moving All right, for now. <laughs> I'll just do that. And you're going to need to come over here after selecting that button and you're going to click on this on click and you need to give it any name for now. We're just going to keep it as default. So we're going to click on enter. And now if I just switch it back so that you see the full image, you can see that this button has the ID button one. And also this one has the ID button one. So from this, and we can understand that basically it doesn't matter which one gets pressed we will have everything inside of this code printed exactly the same. For example, if I go ahead and type in something like um, let me equal to dollar sign. And let's say we want this element to be printed, whichever one it is. So I'm going to go over here and I'll say text two, and then I can say something like console dot log and I can say me and I actually think this is meant to be me so let's change that to the correct spelling again same thing you can see that this is text too it has that ID and this one also has the same ID so we run into this issue where if I click on preview and click key you can see that it says oh sorry I did a mistake we're meant to print dot text like that now if I click on preview it doesn't matter which one I print I click on it's going to print the latest one so if I click here you can say chicken is printed if I click here chicken is printed as well and that's because it's getting the first one that has the ID so how do we actually create a way for us to know which button was being pressed and then perform some specific action maybe we want to when someone clicks on this to actually change something in that specific tile only in the repeater. So let's click back to editor. And to do this, it's actually very simple. Now, all you need to do is see how we've got this event over here. Well, what we need to do is we actually need to go down and let's ignore this function for now. And we can say something like this, dollar sign, Inside of here, we're going to be passing the ID of our button. So it is the same ID for both, for any of the elements in your repeater, which is button one. And then we're going to put dot on click. We're going to open a bracket, another bracket inside of that, and we're going to pass an event. We're then going to be passing an equal sign and then a greater than, and then a zigzaggy bracket, just like this. So we end up with that sort of structure. Now let's try doing things differently. We're going to be creating let, and we're going to say dollar sign item is equal to, and we're going to say dollar w dot. We're going to say at event dot context, and this sort of already makes sense. You can now start understanding that now this item refers to wherever that event happened. So if I click here this item will, will be very specific to that specific tile in the repeater. It doesn't matter how many ones that you have, basically. So after that, what I want to do is, let's say we just want to print the element that's inside of here. Well, what we can do is we can say something like console 
the log bracket and here inside of this what I can do is I can say dollar sign oops, sorry we can say dollar sign and then item so now we're referring to this one and then I'm going to do this I put a hashtag and then I'll pass in the ID of whatever I need in our case this is text two, so we can say text two dot text let's see how this works so I'm going to click on preview and now if I click here you can see that we get chicken and it's printed twice because we we still have that function at the top if I click here you can see that the second one the first function that we have still prints chicken so it still has the issue but the new function that we just created prints the actual beef prints the actual element from the context that we're pressing the button from so let's go ahead and click on back to editor let's go ahead and remove this function that we don't like and now we are going to click on preview and if I click here you can see we've got chicken if I click there you can see that we've got beef so that's how you actually manage to get a specific action submitted per each tile now what if we want to perform a different action well what I can do is I can come over here and instead of just printing we have access to this now so what we can do is we can say something like let meet type is equal to and I'm going to say dollar sign item and then I'm going to say I want to get the element that has the ID to in my specific tile dot text just like this now what we can do is we can actually use just a very simple if statement so I can say if meet type is equal to let's say chicken then what I want to do is that I actually want to say and now we can actually even refer to it we can say I want that specific text on that tile to then be equal to whatever I have so we can say this plus and I can just say is chicken and if it's not actually chicken so else if it's anything else what I want to do is we can copy this exact element and we can simply say is not chicken now I know this is a very silly example and the p reason behind it is just to show you that we can really start comparing and making actions based on elements in my tile for example this might be loading different users or different content from your database and you want to check if that tile has a user that has submitted their email then you want to display a specific element or you want to say is verified but if he didn't you want to click is not verified let's preview this and see what happens if I click on this you can see uh, chicken is chicken so I forgot to add the space if I click here you can see beef is not chicken so once again let's actually do this one more time and this time let's actually add a space and we can actually add it doesn't matter how many elements you have it can be dynamic it will always be the same so let's go ahead and copy this duplicate it we'll come here for this one let's just say something like sushi sushi now let's preview it again let's go ahead and click on this one you can see sushi is not chicken beef is not chicken chicken is chicken we'll manage to perform different actions per each element now whether it's a button whether it's text like I just showed you here um, a list uh, any different kind of input it works the same way first if you want it to be based on a button you're going to be saying button one dot on click event and then in order to refer to the element in the specific context that you want you just need to say let item equals to dollar sign w dot at event dot contest that's it i hope you enjoyed this video make sure you check out the other video that i'm linking somewhere on the screen or have linked it on the screen make sure you leave a comment ask me questions try get in touch with me or check out my website see you in the next episode